base theme is about drawings and different types of drawings you get in designing a building. So the first kind of, if you imagine this is your building, um, if you imagine this is building, then, then um, what you get is essentially you can essentially cut it in, you can get two types of drawings to describe the, the section of it. And that's if you cut it in half, you cut along its short axis, you get the cross section. If you cut along its long axis, you get the longitudinal section. Those two words over there. And what they're basically doing is they, they're describing what the building is made of. You know, you've got your foundations underneath, you've got maybe a window, you've got a truss that maybe supports the roof, um, all of that. And this will describe the frequency of those trusses. Um, it also describe um, this kind of section here, what was happening with this in terms of foundations and etc. So through that process, you've described that building in these two accesses. And the reason we do these drawings is essentially so that someone can take that information and then build it. Um, also, it goes explain. You can talk, use it through meetings when you're describing the building, so the clients can go, oh, "Okay, cool. This is what the building looks like." The big problem, though, is that drawings generally are very hard to read because it's it's not if you're not something practiced in it, you're not going to understand what's going on. Um, so normally, what happens is that when we're doing client presentations, we'll use perspectives um, to do to do these kinds of presentations because that's something we can understand because we all work in the three-dimensional world. As soon as you take the three dimensions, you turn it into two dimensions, it becomes very challenging to understand exactly what's going on. Now, the other kind of section that you get is a horizontal section, which is shown over here. It's called, if this is your building, it's called a, a plan, essentially. And you get, there's the plan over here, and you're cutting parallel to the ground, essentially, if the ground was flat, or parallel to the ground, to the floor, rather. And that you'll be using, and you'll cut through windows, you'll cut through doors, and this plan can look both up or down, right? And if it's looking up, you'll be showing what's happening above that cut line, and if you're looking down, you'll be showing what's underneath or through that cut line. Another kind of drawing you get is an elevation, right? So if this is your building over here, an elevation is essentially the facade of that building um, put on a flat plane. But when we say facade, um, we generally are referring to the walls and not the roof of a building. So, whereas an elevation will include both. Um, and it'll also show other things like, for example, plumbing, um, you know, if you've got a basin or a toilet or something like that, connect to plumbing, it'll show how that plumbing point connects to your main plumbing line, which then connects to your manhole, which then connects to your um, main um, city's plumbing services. Um, it'll show window and door positions, um, all kinds of things. And if you look here, so that you get essentially on this drawing, you'll have forward elevations. You'll have your north elevation. Let's say this is the north facade. You'll have your west elevation, your south elevation, your east elevation. And on the left here, you'll see is the actual elevation drawing. And what that looks like is, um, is essentially, um, it's a flat plane. And, and because if you're looking at this drawing here, this roof is actually just a rectangle on top of another rectangle. Um, and so it, it doesn't convey a lot of information. It's what's, what it's mainly used for is to show heights um, and different kind of materials. So you'd like annotate what this roof is, you'd annotate what this wall is. Um, it's more about finishes. And then if there are, is plumbing, you will annotate the plumbing on this and show this is where the bathroom is, this is where the toilet is, where the basin is that kind of information. So the information on the elevation is quite limited in what it can actually show. Whereas, for example, a section shows a lot more about how the actual building is constructed. Um, the big shortcoming of an elevation drawing is that, let's say, for example, this wall, instead of it being flat, um, was a curved wall. And it uh, did that. This elevation drawing wouldn't be able to represent this. It would look the same as this. So there is a, there's, a, there's a gap in the, in the kind of um, knowledge that it can convey, or the information it could convey, um, of a, of elevation drawing. Um, and <clears throat> so, when you're dealing with clients, and also the interesting is that like builders, even though they are trained to, to work with um, with 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 drawings, it also helps to actually show perspective. So, although this information that we're showing here is is all very much um, flat information, it always helps to have some kind of um, perspective. So what normally helps is if you take, for example, a section and you want to turn that into something that is a, a bit more readable. 
So if your section, I'm just take, showing a section out of this building here, you'll take the section and then you'll turn it into a perspective drawing. So that, oh, this is a bit off here. So that when you're inside this space, you can understand what's actually going on. I'll show you better. You, normally what you do is you do that, show that in a one point perspective. You know, you'd show how everything kind of conveys to a point. Um, So what you're doing now is you're conveying both structural information in terms of there's a, there's a truss here, um, it's holding up the roof, just draw a normal, kind of, I think it's called a how truss, um, and you'll be able to show in the space, you'll show windows and you'll maybe this is all glass, um, so you'll show the different frames and things in the background. Um, and so in that in that kind of instance you you you're you're showing both a structural drawing as well as its experiential drawing so it's it's a detailed documented drawing as well as um, an experiential perf um, perspective now when you're drawing doing drawings let's say for example your building um, Let's say, so I've drawn very simple rectangles here. Let's say for instance, um, your building kind of does something like this. It sweeps. And let's say for instance, the roof changes. So the roof is quite tall here, and it's quite low here. And as it goes down, it sweeps and becomes lower. What's happening is the truss inside that roof is changing every couple of, couple of meters. To create this, or well, actually every time, every every truss will be unique essentially. Um, and let's say, for instance, uh, let's draw this through. Oh. And so, what happens then is that instead of having to just have you know one section and one longitudinal and one cross section, you need to then essentially have a section for every, almost every iteration of this. Um, of this building so that <clears throat> you can understand it in, in, in series and you can build it like that and you will then need to be able to explain what the height is of each of these points as you're moving through the building to understand better and in this drawing for instance a longitudinal sectional doesn't work you can't you can't cut a section like this because it, it's going to be an unreadable drawing um, you'll create very kind of random kind of angles inside those trusses and it's just going to be a mess so the only way you can represent this building essentially will be by doing a plan which is a drawing over here so it's a cut cut down so you're cutting at like a meter above the floor finish looking down because or maybe up as well and then you'll have these cut um, buildings and if you look at the elevation the elevation is also, almost also going to give you no information the elevation of this will just be a flat plane essentially with the roof on top and sure you can show um, the change the change in the gradients by densing and loosening these lines that I'm showing now and and that'll kind of give you the illusion of it sweeping and, and deepening out and coming forward and back but <clears throat> it's not accurate enough so it's not a, it's not a, a true representation it's not a real um, representation of, of how to build um, so I mentioned all this, and there's a drawing here on the right that I haven't actually discussed um, after before meeting unmuting my mic. So the big thing that's happening here is that the reason we we do this is that when we're designing a building, we're designing a three-dimensional object on two dimensions using either paper, um, you know, drawing, or um, on PC or, or Mac PC or computer, um, using programs like AutoCAD, um, and then sometimes or what's happening now is that most programs are actually we're designing buildings in 3D um, and those will be programs like Revit or um, AutoCAD I mean um, ArchiCAD sorry and by learning these two-dimensional programs we're creating a three-dimensional object um, in in virtual space and then from there we're converting that into a two-dimensional object 
giving the, the two-dimensional object to the contractor and then that contractor then takes the three-dimensional two-dimensional object and reconverts it back into a three-dimensional object now you'll see that there's a there's a there's a disconnect here because so, if we just were to able to give the three-dimensional object directly to the contractor or to a 3d printer for instance then you wouldn't you wouldn't need all of this information all these drawings essentially become irrelevant because you just give them the guy the model and he just builds it now I mentioned this um, just because um, although this is super important to know currently I can foresee this changing quite dramatically in the next five to ten years where buildings are no longer um, designed and drawn up and documented like they are currently but rather they just these models are given to contractors and they then have to just build the thing the big problem is oh sorry okay. um, the big problem is when you get to things like details because these um, these programs are can't on, are unable to really convey the finer detail of a building, um, it there's a shortcoming there. Now, I actually just want to quickly talk about that last thing. And 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 um, what you get is you get essentially when you have a, a section, um, it says you got your wall, you have got your floor. Um, there's a specific junction, and where those two j uh, connect, that's generally where we as architects would design details. How, um, and I'm circling them because I'm just showing you where these details would take place. Maybe there's a window and we would detail the top and the bottom of that window. Um, and maybe at the top of this truss we would detail that. Um, and so this last kind of drawing that you get is a section. So it's a kind of same as we've got over there except it's much more blown up. So let's say for instance normally you'd have you know your floor about this thick shown on a drawing, your wall maybe about that thick. On a detail, it's you'll show the tile. You know, you'll even show the different kind of tile. You'll show the grouting. You'll show the screed below that. You'll show the surface bed below that. You'll show the waterproofing layer underneath that. Um, you'll show the wall, um, and you might even show the bricks um, if you're, you know, that kind of architect. If that's the kind of detail that you go into, I, I don't normally do that because I think it's a waste of time. Um, and you'll show the waterproofing and how it runs up and how it creates a DPC. And you'll show maybe the skirting if that's what you're using. So you'll, you, you'll go into quite a lot of detail actually in explaining what's actually happening at each of these kind of points. Um, and, and generally details happen when there's a junction, when there's a connection between steel and wood and wood and masonry, um, concrete and, and brick or, um, you know, whatever these kind of connections are. Glass, obviously, also. Um, how to deal with waterproofing, how to deal with water. Um, all of these kinds of drawings come together and you, um, and you um, come together to kind of to document the building, to explain how to actually build it. And the thing that's super interesting is that because if you look at how buildings, generally speaking, um, are quite consistent throughout, you know, there's generally, I'm, I'm drawing boxes for a reason because that's how most people understand or perceive buildings to be. You know, if you look at sky, high, sky rise, um, skyscrapers, they're the same. They're also very tall, but they're essentially a box. Um, and so the, it's in the detailing that you actually start getting to be able to express yourself um, as, as an architect um, and also able to introduce new ways of doing things, for instance. Let's say, um, let's say, for example, instead of having this apex in the center of the building, you have it on the one side and you create a single pitched roof or you put it on off center and you create a dual pitch but this the 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 